All set? All set. All set. Okay. I'd like to call to order the April 8th, 2024 meeting of the West Bridgewater School Committee. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence. Thank you. The listing of matters on tonight's agenda are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at this meeting. Not all items may, in fact, be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This meeting is being shown live on cable and is being live streamed on the West Bridgewater Community Access Media website, wb-cam.org. A recording of this meeting will also be made available on the wb-cam.org website. Um, I'd like to welcome Mackenzie uh, Craig to uh, the committee. Mackenzie, thank you for being here and um, taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Okay, uh, first up is the approval of meeting min minutes. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our February 5th, March 4th, and March 11 meetings as presented. I'll move that we approve the February 5th, March 4th, and March 11th meeting minutes. All right, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Mm. No, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, so moved. Next up is recognitions. We have some additional students to recognize as recipients of the John and Abigail Adams Award. Yes, unfortunately the students are not here. Um, they, um, some of them had work. I thought Saad was coming, but uh, he is not. Um, so yes, we got notified through Desi that we had three more um, award recipients, which we're excited for. Um, when we get more students in, before it opens up some more room for the top 25 percent so we are excited to recognize Adeline Jenkinson Saad Khan and Samantha Morse uh, so I will pass along certificates to them and uh, we wish them not wish we <laughs> say congratulations to them Great. congratulations to them And next is you. Next is <laughs> <laughs> uh, We will be good. Great. Uh, Donna, we want to thank you um, for your nine years of service. Um, you've been such an amazing school committee member, um, working on subcommittees. You've always been there for the kids. Um, you're there for the entire district, the students, the families, the faculty. So we're very thankful for all you've done. Uh, we've been blessed to have you. We're actually lucky with the later than normal election or maybe That's earlier right. meeting, we get you for another yes. night, which yes. is a, a great thing. Thank you. So thank you so much. We thank have a, a plaque for you, oh, and it you. reads, the West Bridgewater School Committee and Superintendent would like to thank Donna Hume for her years of service to the students in West Bridgewater. So thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. a great you. job. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. I did write up a little something so I wouldn't forget what to say, but um, it's with a heavy heart that I say goodbye to my role on the school committee after nine years of service. <clears throat> it's truly been an honor to have the opportunity to contribute to the betterment of our community's educational landscape. Reflecting on the past nine years, I'm grateful for the support from our administrators, teachers, staff, fellow parents, and past and present school committee members. I'm also thankful for the support from Dr. Oakley in my early years and most recently for Mr. Bodwell. I am proud of the way we've worked together to provide our students with the best possible learning environment. And finally, to our Wildcat students, you are the heart and soul of everything we do. You fuel our passion for education and it has been a privilege to serve you. Thank you again. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve our community in this role. I look forward to continuing serving on the school building committee and witnessing the continued growth and success of our schools in the years to come. Thank so you. Much. Thank you very much. Sure. Careful. Sure. Get a little trip on the last night, you know. Yeah, that's all I need. Right in the middle. Lord. Oh, oh yeah. Because we all fall, so we're falling. We all fall down. Thank you.
So, Don, I, um, I just want to thank you personally. You, um, you know, you talk about the students being the heart and soul, but you have been a heart and soul of this committee. Um, your presence, you're at every event, you're always there for, for anyone. Um, you've handled yourself, you know, we have some strong personalities on this committee, and you've always been at the utmost professional, you. and you've you just really exemplified our Wildcat value, so thank you. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. I miss you guys. <laughs> and I want to thank you as well. Oh, thank you. You've kept this ship steady, <laughs> at least on my last, my last three years here. And I've learned a lot from you. I don't know who's going to manage all the folders. And, <laughs> and now you're kind of the, um, the silent gears behind our digital presence. Nice. So, thank you very thank much, Donna. You're welcome. I was just oh. going to ask if anyone else wanted like, to say something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. <laughs> I didn't know Don before that and basically said, well, it really depends what your goals are. If, if your goal is that you just want to work to help continue and ensure that the West Bridgewater Public Schools are the best possible schools for our kids, for all of our kids, and are good, then you should be on the school committee. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, yeah, yeah, I, I do that. <laughs> and then she's like, and I will have to give up. About PTO because I've been doing that for six years. <laughs> 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 then she got in, she got elected, and still got PTO for a few years. doing everything. The thing about Donna that I found is, although she's quiet, um, probably one of the most organized members <laughs> that I ever worked with, but also um, self educated. Every time there was an issue or problem, anything, she always did the research, she's always learning about it. She would never take lightly a vote without making sure that she knew everything about it and would often come into the office with me and play devil's advocate and say, but what about this, but what about this? But that's a good member because they get the superintendent thinking from, in a different perspective. And um, I just want to thank you for the support that you gave me for those five years. And i um, very glad that we can still be friends. So nice. Congratulations. Thank you very you. much. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you for staying on the school building committee because we will not lose touch with you and no. we know you're always around West yes. Bridgewater, which is I'll, great. I'll be here. I look forward to that. Yep. Can I interrupt really fast? Oh, yay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Congratulations. That's <laughs> Meet him yeah, let's meet him halfway. Yeah, yeah. Um, come on. Come right in. Although right he's in young, yeah. Yeah. He, can, he can do it. Yeah. I'll sit yeah. here. No. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Congratulations. Great job. Superintendent's update. Okay, Mr. thank Bible. you, Ms. Hume. So we're very fortunate to have our new school resource officer, Officer Packard, here. I know Officer Packard very well, uh, having him as a student, but also coaching him uh, many, many years ago. Uh, we've been great, to, uh, very fortunate, have such a wonderful working relationship with the West Bridgewater Police Department. We've had great SROs over the years, and Chris is doing a wonderful mm -hmm. job. So we wanted him to come in, just say hello, and tell us a little bit about himself. Thanks for having me. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, my my born and raised, raised in town, town so I'm not new to the area. area. So I graduated in the old high school in 2004. I have two young kids in the Spring Street School now, so they'll be coming up through the whole system. Uh, I've been on our department for 10 years, and I just took over from Tim Pope as the SRO here. And I uh, look forward to getting to know everybody, and I already know pretty much everybody in this room. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, Mr. Bodwell used to be my soccer coach, so. <laughs> But if anybody has any questions, um, I'm always around. I got an office downstairs, so nice to meet you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. It's a very well decorated well office too. Yeah. 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 We appreciate that. He put to shade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check that out. Um, 
wanted um, our administrators to talk a little bit about our district chronic absenteeism plan. Um, just a little history. The state has been looking at data for a few years now. Um, we take a lot of pride in our student attendance. We want our students to come to school every day. We want them to be happy, and it's important for them to be here not only for their mental health, but obviously also for student achievement. Uh, so the administrators looked at what they would like to do in their own individual schools, and then we had them work collectively to develop a district plan that they're going to share some of the highlights with you. Um, just so everyone's aware, so chronic absenteeism is defined by missing 10% or more of the school year. So for 180 days, that would be missing 18 or more days. Um, we do understand that some absences are unavoidable, sickness or mental health or certain you know, times that students have to be out. Um, the goal is to work with them and the, the student and the families to keep them coming to school as often as possible. And you can see through the data that our students do well. We're in the blue, so we are um, significantly below the state average, and we're following a very similar pattern over the past few years. We've also looking at the data this year, and we are right around the 14, 15 percent um, as of a week or so ago. So the goal is to keep that hopefully at the 14.6 percent or lower. So if they want to come up and share. to decrease the number of students in the district who are chronically absent. Like Mr. Bottle said, 10% of the days enrolled from school by 5% uh, by June 2024. So the way we developed our plan was doing it in three different tiers. So tier one is letters and phone calls home. We've kind of um, changed our letter home, talking more about the definition of chronic absenteeism and the importance of having students in school versus why why we don't want kids out of school. So really flipping it to the positive. Uh, we're having attendance discussions at our student-based meetings. We're having parent meetings or at the upper level student meetings, making sure they understand the importance of being in school. And if there's a barrier there of why they're not coming, trying to address that within the school. Um, and also over the summer, we're gonna be working as an admin team to develop some um, information packets to go out at the beginning of the year so that parents truly understand the importance of our students being in school. And one of the things that I've talked about is the importance of not only just sending the letters but making a personal connection with the students and the families and having people who have a good connection with that individual student reach out to them, talk to them, and hopefully that helps in the getting the kids to school. So for tier two, that's just recognizing that sometimes we just need a little extra support. So the way we look at tier two is what is the connection that each individual student may need in addition to get them uh, on track and coming to school. So some of that may be extra academic support so they're feeling confident. Feeling more confident makes you hopefully more excited to come to school. Could be counseling, mentoring, different uh, wraparound services, and at times uh, flexible schedules because the goal is to have the students happy, safe, and learning. With tier two schedules or interventions, just like interventions in the classroom or SEL interventions, we're going to monitor how long we're going and hopefully we're making progress to where we'll be returning back to tier one and, and tier one's for everybody. And then um, we try very hard not to get to tier three interventions, but um, sometimes, you know, we need to do that. Um, that's where, um, you know, we'll go home, we'll go to the house. Um, uh, many times it's with the adjustment counselor along with the guidance counselor, um, Mr. Hanna or myself, and um, just go to have a conversation with the family, with the student, uh, to see if we can, um, you know, get them to come. The big biggest thing many times we find and a lot of times with the anxious student is just getting them in the building. Uh, when they get through that front door, um, they're okay, you know. Um, sometimes it's a matter of, and you'll see uh, working out of the guidance office. Um, just get into the building and we'll work with you. Um, we've started this year uh, for credit recovery purposes um, at the high school level, um, you know, eight unexcused absences and 15 and a half year full year. Um, so sometimes when kids get to that point and we're, and we're working with families through the letters, um, these students, you know, we don't want to just 
break them. Um, so what we do is we work with them to say, listen, put five days of getting here on time, staying the full day, uh, and you do that five times in a row, we'll give you back a day. Um, so it still gives them that light to hopefully get over the hump. Uh, and it's worked. Uh, we've had some good success with that. Um, so for us, really, it's getting them in the building. Um, and from there, there's so many things that we can do. Um, but So we, we get to tier three, we do, um, but Tier one and tier two are more of where we're at, I would say, at this point. What percentage would you say do we have in tier three versus the other two? two? Oh, less than one percent. I mean, I can only speak for my school, but um, I would say less than one percent. Okay. Yeah. For tier one, does that letter go home exactly on day 18? So it, it's automatically generated at 5, 10, and 15. Um, and and with, with the five, uh, in the letter it'll say please contact the school. Uh, so if, if we don't hear from them, then we'll reach out. Um, and really it's to have the conversation. Um, so, you know, and especially, unfortunately a lot of these students don't have the supports, you know, that some of, you know, our, our, our children do at home. And, um, you know, parents work in two jobs. And so having the conversation I think is the most important thing. And um, the letter kind of gets that going. Can I just ask about your goal? I love the smart goal. Um, what is the baseline? Are we using that 14 to 15% as the baseline for percentage of students absent? Yes. Okay. Yep. So, and then by June 2024, what duration is that being? Are we looking at? I mean, I'm, I'm having a hard time. I love the goal. I love all the interventions. I'm just trying to understand the data a little bit more and how we measure. Five percent. How we measure that success? Well, we're we're going over the school year, mm -hmm. you know. So we're going to look at the data in June, and see if our percentage has hit the number. Uh, so we really won't be able to gauge it until June. Uh, so it'll probably be a summer conversation um, at our admin retreat. And so I'm, I just looked back on. Okay. Yeah. So the fourteen point six percent is from two thousand dollars. Okay. Great. It's a, yeah, it's 23-24, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, FY25 update, some very good and exciting news that this past week, the town administrator recommended a fully funded school committee budget to the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee, and they both approved that. So we are moving forward with the school committee's approved budget with an increase of 6.93%. Um, going to town meeting, so I think that's uh, that's good, um, and uh, I think that's helpful for all. Uh, it's a needs-based budget, and we got what we need. We do have needs for the future. Uh, we are down a little bit from the year before, but I think it still um, gets to where we need to be for the FY25. I also want to share that our, the capital budget committee and the town boards did approve to move to town meeting the two. Capital budget items, one being elementary teacher Chromebooks, uh, which are very needed. Uh, some are about eight years old. We are able to go with Chromebooks rather than laptops, which is a substantial savings to the district. Uh, I mean, we really should be replenishing these every four to five years. So it's a, a good investment for our educators. And here at the Middle Senior High School, five copiers. It's actually a cost savings to buy them rather than to lease them. Um, they are original from moving into the building. So they're definitely showing their wear and the number of copies. We're trying to limit the amount of copies we make, uh, but they're still used throughout the day. And the Chromebooks are replacing laptops, right? Correct. Uh, school choice update. We did have a record number of applications, just over 220. Uh, we are not taking any late applications at this time. We have had lots of calls. Uh, people missing the deadline or people not knowing we are closed, but really the need to stop because we are, it's really spread across K to 12. The number of uh, students are heavy in the grades 9 and the elementary, uh, but we do have a decent amount this year in grades 10, 11, and 12 as well. Uh, after April break, we'll start looking at the numbers um, and really diving deep into how many openings we have. We know we have a good average of the number that go to Southeastern every year for grade nine. Uh, we have a lower than normal ninth grade class this year, opening up some more spots in grade 10. 
Um, and then a few spots, maybe in the grades 11 and 12. At this time, the elementary grades, unfortunately, are closed. Uh, we are concerned uh, about the growth that we have in town. And it's not, I say this all the time, it's not just the growth we have now, but it's the growth over the next few years. Adding a student into grade 9 or 10, 11, and 12, we know it's a short-term time they're with us. Adding them into the lower grades and with the housing that's being built and the apartments that are being uh, built as well, I'm concerned that... You know, year two, year three, year four down the road, well before we get into any new uh, new school building. Uh, we will notify families when they're accepted by mail. Uh, we will end up having a lottery probably in most grades, so we'll be pulling names out of a hat. So you mentioned that the applicants are spread over all grade levels, but are they more heavily concentrated in the elementary levels? Are there sort of an even split? It's pretty even, secondary? to be honest with you. I mean, there's every grade would have to have a lottery um, we have you know minimum 10 to 12 per grade um, probably about 35 or so in grade nine which is usually our biggest number um, so those numbers will still have to do the lottery msba update so we are moving forward it's um, we want to move as fast as we can but we're obviously beholden to the timeline set by the MSBA. Uh, we did have our last school building committee meeting on March 26, where uh, the firm of PMA was uh, announced and they did a presentation to the school building committee. Um, very excited to have them on board. It doesn't become official until we go to the May 6 OPM review panel uh, with the MSBA. We had a deadline of April 10th to submit the OPM narrative. Uh, it was submitted today, though, so that's been accepted. They may come back with some questions or wanting more information. We sent them all the documents, so 12 attachments to the emails with lots of different information that they require. Um, at the review panel, hopefully they will move forward with PMA, and then we'll enter into the contract with them. Um, we are looking to schedule a uh, separate subcommittee meeting moving forward to look at the designer and architect. And our next scheduled full school building committee meeting will be uh, May 28th. Um, but I th and at that point, we'll have already probably submitted information for the designer slash architect. Um, and the nice part about having the OPM on board is then they start to run all these uh, mm -hmm. meetings and they'll work on the RFS, which we had to do internally the last time. So we're moving forward. We're very excited. We feel we've got a great firm in place. We've had great firms that apply. We did interviews where we you know, talked with four different firms, but they rose above the rest. I was able to catch the meeting on demand or online, whatever mm -hmm. it's called. Um, and I was really impressed with their packaging and the features that they offer and just their whole presentation it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I think they're a local firm. They've done local elementary schools, mm -hmm. uh, which was a huge plus, one in Easton, one in Rockland, mm -hmm. one in Carver. Um, and they come very highly recommended um, by many. And they're very... They're, they're going to be good to work with, but they're also aggressive in certain areas where timelines are important and pushing timelines because the short duration is going to hopefully cost less money. So they've got some interesting good ideas about that. Um, we're going to talk, um, we're continuing to talk as an administrative team about an early college program. It's something that the state is also pushing. Um, this is Giannis is going to talk for a few minutes about it, but we also have a meeting scheduled with the South Shore Early College um, director uh, later this week. So I'll let Ms. Giannis talk about her experiences. So Amy Wilder and I attended the um, Bridgewater State University Early, Early College Symposium, and I was so impressed with what we heard. We both were. I came back and I said to Mark, we need to do this. So I actually wrote it into the SOA as part of one of our... Um, things that we're going to do. 
So the Early College Initiative in Massachusetts launched in 2017 and it eases the path pathway to post-secondary education for thousands of high school students annually. Early college students take strategically sequenced real college classes with strong career orientation during their regular high school day at no cost to themselves or their families. They receive enhanced academic and guidance support to help them thrive in, a rigorous in the rigorous college courses. They graduate from high school with significant college credits, reducing the cost and time to degree completion. And they graduate, graduate with the proven confidence, habits, and skills needed to be successful in college and career. As of fall 2023, there were 53 early college partnerships with 61 high schools and 28 higher education partners involved. Um, so like Mark said, we're meeting with um, Josh on the 11th to find out a little bit more um, about it, but at the symposium, I was sitting with one of the teachers from Easton who um, is a college, she does the early college for English in Easton, and um, the way it works is she had to submit a syllabus to Middlesex Community College, and they accepted her syllabus. And she teaches college courses within the college within the um, high school day, and these are geared toward uh, middle of the line kids or kids that don't think they're college material. We're trying to get them into college and trying to make them see that college could work for them. Um, so Jen was telling me, her name's Jen Tantillo, was telling me that she, um, there's two pathways, um, well there's, you have to create a pathway for the college um, career pathway. And then while they're in, while she has a class, she could have students that are not on that college pathway, but they're in the same class, but there's, the syllabus is differentiated to meet the needs of those college students versus the students that are just there for high school credits. Um, early college is a well-researched initiative and multiple national gold standard evaluations demonstrate that early college can double associate degree attainment and significantly boost four-year completion rates. In Massachusetts, even in its early maturity, the early college initiative is providing immediate and significant gains for students enrolled gains of 15 to 16 percentage points in college matriculation and persistence, each compared to well-matched peers. Importantly, these gains are consistent across student subgroups, economics, economic status, race, or ethnicity, ethnicity, and qualitative data matches the quantitative data. Students report that they are engaged and motivated by the relevance of their college classes. They see connections to their future life and have newfound confidence in their own potential. So it's a win-win. Um, we have to become designated partners, so that include that has a lot um, of different aspects to it, but we'll learn more on Thursday when we talk with Josh. We still have a decent amount of questions to be answered, mm -hmm. but we want to do what's best for our students. Mm -hmm. Is it just up to the colleges whether or not they'll accept those credits? Do they have to like opt in or? Um, the call that what we heard was Bridgewater State presented um, UMass Dartmouth, Middlesex Community College, um, Massasoit, Bristol Community College. They were accepting the credits. Because right now we have kids that take classes over Massasoit. Is it the same? Is it the same? Dual enrollment. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a little different. There's okay. a little bit so of a nuanced different. difference. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is, they'll be taking the courses inside the, inside the, I want to call it a college, inside the high school. <laughs> Yeah. So is the differentiated syllabus going to include assignments for those students that yep. wouldn't be for the mainstream class? Yep. So the, the college courses will be more rigorous. The college part will be more rigorous. It's, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yeah. As soon as we get it, we'll share it. <laughs> Not sure if you knew. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've seen it. Um, the timing was tough um, with our dismissal starting at 2 and going until 3.15 or so. It was kind of right in the middle. So we did send out information to families on Friday, just providing them what we're doing, what we're not doing, um, encouraging them to talk to their children. Uh, I want to thank all of our staff, uh, office staff especially, because we did 
encourage, I guess, you know, people if they wanted to dismiss their child to do so, um, so they could experience the eclipse as family or in groups. Uh, I think it went well. I know athletics delayed events uh, starting till after 4.30, which seemed to work out very well. Um, it was a beautiful day. Um, and it was a, a good, yeah, I think some they'll remember for a long time. Right. So, uh, parents were great. I didn't have, hear any you know, back and forth. And again, with the timing of it, we decided not to do any events and pass out glasses, but I think a lot of kids did experience it. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to our student rep update, Mackenzie. Um, at the Spring Street School, in preschool, through the use of literature and stories, they have been exploring colors, color mixing, construction, and engineering. They read several versions of the story, The Three Pigs, and worked in groups to build houses that the wolf could not blow down. Not a Box is a story about imagination and creativity. Various boxes were placed in the classroom for use during dramatic play so children could decide what they wanted their, house, their box to become. Mouse paint is a story about three mice who are trying to hide from the cat by dipping themselves in paint and making new colors. Students then made their own mouse paint art and explored how mixing colors makes new colors. Pre-K and kindergarten classes celebrated Scribble Day on March 27th to share a message of kindness and acceptance. This day encourages children to create art to matter, to matter their ability. Every artist started, started with a scribble. Kindergarten started a new module in our Wit and Wisdom curriculum, which focuses on animals. They will focus on two different genres in this module, informational text and storybooks. The first two stories were a big hit, and the PTO is sponsoring a petting zoo at the Spring Street School to tie in with our stories. Students have been working hard with CVC words. They have been busy, been busy playing with words only changing one letter at a time, and also discriminating between words b being real or nonsense. Their reading skills have been really taking off through our small group learning and decodable text. We have also been been hard at work building and writing complete sentences, focusing on uppercase letters to start finger spaces and punctuation. All kindergarten classes are working hard to solve ST math puzzles and our challenge for the month of March was to maintain a f average of 40 puzzles, which we did. We also had many students reach 100% of completion of the program and move on to the challenge level. Other math topics being explored are addition, decomposing numbers, whole slash part, three-dimensional shapes, and problem solving. Roselle McDonald School. A big thank you to the Whale and Dolphin con cons Conservation, as well as the WBPTO for another amazing presentation to our grade two students. Delilah is a life-size inflatable North Atlantic right whale. They got to go inside the whale and learn about its body and what it eats. They also looked at and touched real whale vertebrae and baleen, which are whale teeth. The Power Squad from the National Theater for Children performed for our third grade students. During the show, students learned the importance of energy efficiency. This 25 minute show featured two engaging actors performing a fun story that kept students laughing and learning. Reading Across America was treated to Tommy's Magic of Books program, magic show that inspires children to turn off their televisions and video games and turn on the thrill of reading. The children witness how reading inspires imagination, as some very popular storybooks come to life. The Velveteen Rabbit, The Secret Garden, and Charlotte's Web are a few books utilized in this exciting educational performance of fun and laughter. Thank you to the PTO for sponsoring this great program. The Student Council Math Subcommittee hosted their very first March Ma Math Madness Challenge where each student was challenged to practice great appropriate math facts and increase their math fluency over the month. The winning class will be announced this week. Our student leader, leaders also facilitated a fundraiser to raise money for cancer research. The council is happy to share their efforts collected over $1,600 that will be donated to the Dana-Farber and the Jimmy Fund. The Garden Subcommittee met with Ms. Grinder, Director of Food Services, to participate in a taste testing and discuss plans for a school garden. Student council leaders were excited to see a preferred selection already make its way on to this month's lunch menu. The rainbow bagels were a hit. They will also be planting seeds after the vacation break. 
the Howard School. Howard School had an MCAS pep rally. Students were filled with energy and positivity. We had a special visit from WB's favorite wildcat mascot. The first round of the spring ML ELA MCAS is, is almost complete. Students in grades four and six and worked hard over the last few weeks and we are proud of them. On Tuesday, our grade six embarks on their annual nature classroom field trip. Students will be unplugging for the week and working collaboratively on projects while they experience a memory of a lifetime. Miss Winter is facilitating our Dirty Thumbs Club with grade four and five students twice a week at the Vineyard Farms. The students are getting a first-hand experience on agriculture and farming. The high school. The first round of the spring MCAS is complete. Students in grades 10, 8, and 7 worked hard over the last few weeks and we were proud of them. The production of Annie Jr. the musical was performed over the weekend. The student actors were amazing and all their hard work and preparation was evident in their performance. A big thank you to, the, to advisors Miss Martin and Miss Romano and their first year as directors. The competitive pickleball tournament is going strong for students in grades 9, nine through 12 during power blocks. The family competition has been a lot of fun for students. The unified basketball jamboree was held at WB last week. Each team played two games and had a cheering crowd cheering them on. Great season. The photo club is hosting its aunt annual best in show photo contest. It is open to all high school students and staff. Photos are hanging in the green comments. Students are voting on their favorite. The photo with the most votes will win and its creator will receive a prize. That's amazing. Take a sip. Take a breath. All good stuff. Thank you, Mackenzie. All right. Um, under business, we have three voting issues to appoint <coughs> Mr. Bodwell to PCC, North River Collaborative, and Reeds Collaborative for the upcoming fiscal school year. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'd like to make a motion uh, to appoint Mr. Bodwell to serve as a member on the board of Project Contemporary Competitiveness Incorporated for 2024-2025 fiscal school year. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so moved. Um, next, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Mr. Bottle to serve as the West Bridgewater Public School representative on the board of directors of the North River Collaborative for the 2024-2025 fiscal school year in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40, Section 4E, as amended by Chapter 43 of the Acts of 2012. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Um, and lastly, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Mr. Bodwell to serve as the West Bridgewater Public Schools representative on the board of directors of Reed's Collaborative for the 2024-2025 fiscal school year in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40, Section 4E, as amended by Chapter 43 of the Acts of 2012. Is there a second? No. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Welcome. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, superintendent evaluation dates. Um, I can just say, as you know, Mr. Bodwell's evaluation is um, typically presented at the June school committee meeting. So keeping that same schedule, um, working backwards from the next meeting on June 3rd, um, Mr. Bottle, I was thinking if you could get your documents and evidence to the committee by May 17th, and then the committee could complete the individual evaluations by the 24th. That would leave a week um, to get the summative evaluation done. I don't know if those dates look good for everyone. Enough time? That looks fine to me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Me. Okay. So the same format. Were the dates fine with me? Okay. Uh, same format in terms of a shared Google like mm -hmm. folder with documents. If there's other information you want to see, please just okay. let me know and I'll I, get you whatever you need. Yeah, I did um, just today put a template in our shared school committee drive um, that can be used for the evaluations, and I put a shortcut to the copy of your um, goals in there, so Perfect. we have that for reference. So if you, um, you know, we can just use that as sort of the storage point for any other evidence and everything Excellent. you want to share. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. That's underway. Yep. Uh, anything else on that? 
No? No. Okay. Well, Donna, will you be able to give feedback as well? Absolutely, yeah. Thank I'll you. still plan to do an evaluation Great. if that's all right. Thank you. Everybody? Yes. Um, okay, so another voting issue next is the 2024-25 academic calendar. Um, I know we brought it up at the last meeting, um, and I think we all have a copy of it. It was in our folder. Um, so I think the only uh, point of discussion that we had mentioned was that the way the dates fall this year uh, or next year is um, Christmas break and the way the dates fall right now, the t calendar list having the two full weeks off um, between uh, Christmas and New Year's. Um, and then I think one other change was made on the um, copy that we have now the for end, the Juneteenth. The date yeah. Of yeah, correct. Yep. I don't think I think Juneteenth was counted as a day, so right. I just moved it one day. One over. day extra. Um, so that would make the last day of school with five snow days. June 23rd instead of the 20th. Yes, on the Monday. Yeah, yeah which yep. would be the half day for that. Yep. Um, so I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the 2024 2025 school calendar um, as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Did you, I know you want to talk about, you did poll the teachers. We right? did poll the teachers. It was, I think it was 81.3%. Uh, had voted in favor of the, the two weeks. I've said all along, you know, to me, it's, um, I, I don't have a personal preference on it. Um, my only thoughts are that it does provide, you know, if it were to be the two <coughs> weeks, it does provide a longer break in terms of maybe health reasons. Uh, and my only concerns about coming back would be two, it would be, potential attendance concerns if people are off that week and aren't coming back uh, and the weather um, is a potential concern. I do, we did, we kind of look back at past history when doing calendars and Kim goes back and sees what we did when the same dates are in play and they did have that time off. Uh, I think there's been another time where that uh, may not have been the case and we had a snow day on one of them and I think both days were canceled. So. Those are, you know, my thoughts on it. Again, to me, I'm up in the air. I'll pro you know, if, if we're off, I'll probably be working. Anyhow. <laughs> so um, just wanted to share my thoughts or potential concerns. Yeah. And do you have an idea? I mean, I did a little research myself. Um, not all surrounding areas have released their calendar for next year, but what a general idea of other just what other I've asked around. around. Um, I haven't gotten a lot of responses yeah. if they haven't officially approved them. Um, it seems to be a mixed bag, um, but I, I don't. I don't want to give data because I did not yeah. look too much into it, so I don't want to say either way. It's just a good thing that the dates don't fall that <laughs> that way often. So right, think, you know, yeah, we're two weeks either way, sense. we're still out pretty early. It's either the thirteenth, or if we were to go to school, those days it would be June eleventh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think selfishly, I. When I saw the initial calendar, I was really excited because I was thinking my kids would be able to get two full weeks off of school. And my kids are older, so I'm not in a situation where I would have daycare issues. Um, but then when I stopped and thought about, you know, being a working parent, you know, I, I there's something about having two full weeks off that makes me feel uneasy because I know that a it's a very tough time financially for a lot of people b a lot of parents don't have that all that time off it's you know if you're, you're in the corporate world everybody's scrambling to try to take a couple days because it's year end and most businesses and people in, in all hands are on deck to be honest um so you know it's I, I've been really torn and talked to a couple of people about it about you know how I've you know selfishly I would love my kids to you know be on vacation and, and do stuff, but I do just feel, you know, that, you know, the, the broader community, you know, there's there's parents that aren't able to take that time and, and to be with their kids, so. Yeah, I have, um, I have similar hesitations. Um, I polled some parents and it was really kind of mixed, it was 50-50. Um, and similar to what Carrie was saying, um, a lot of the parents of older kids wanted to take the full time off, whereas, Parents of younger kids um, said, "No, uh, you know, childcare is going to be an issue." Um, so that was, you know, that's one of my hesitations. Another hesitation for me is with Juneteenth in there. 
And I know we haven't historically used all five snow days in recent years, but if we use all five weather days, we're then getting out on the 23rd. It bumps us the whole next week. And I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't love that. Um, and then my last concern, which is probably the most, um, the heaviest for me, is when I reached out to parents, I had one reach out to, or contact me and say, you know, I really wish the school committee would consider non-salaried employees when they vote for the calendar. And she said, you know, we get paid hourly for those weeks. And if we're, most of us have summer jobs. And so when we're released, we start our summer job. Whereas if we have two weeks off, we go two weeks without a check. And she said, at least if we work two days, we have small income to receive um, for that week. So that, and I've really been thinking a lot about it over the last month. I did, I looked at a lot of districts. Um, most of the districts around us haven't released yet. I was only able to find two actually that have released and are taking the full two weeks. So, you know, I, I'm really hesitant to take the full, the full time off. I'd love to, and I'd love, and I know one of the arguments is to do a extended mental health leave for our students and for our staff. Um, yeah, I would love to do that, but I'm just, I'm really hesitant. One potential concern, if we work those two days for our educators, if their districts were off, they may end up having child care issues mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Just to so, kind of look both sides. Yeah, that, which is what everybody else and, was, was going to have if, yeah. if we take it off, you know? So it's, right. we're not going to make anybody, you know, yeah. I, I, I hear you. Yeah. It's pros and cons to mm. having There are. So. It's, it stinks. <laughs> Should we vote? Uh, Want to do a roll call? Maybe. <laughs> so I, yeah, I think I'm so. okay with it. I accept it as it's. Um, I'm going to vote no. I'll vote yes. Vote no. Okay. So three to two? Yep. We'll take the two weeks and be glad it doesn't happen every year. <laughs> and we'll hope for no snow. And hope for no <laughs> snow, yes. Well, less than four we'll be years. lucky, hopefully. Um, okay. But we can hope for snow on those two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Get right. Plenty of snow. Right. yeah. <laughs> so everybody will be home. No, because then people's planes are going to get screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up is um, CPAC update. The mission of West Bridgewater Special Education Parent Advisory Council is to build inclusive schools and communities. We do this by supporting families of students with IEPs and 504s and including regular education parents in our pursuit for equity and inclusion. April is Autism Awareness Month. Autism is a neurological variation. This means that brains of autistic people work differently than the brains of autistic or non-autistic people. Not lesser, just different. Join the WBC PAC during the week of April 22nd through the 26th in celebrating neurodivergence and learning more about the autistic community as we acknowledge and celebrate our differences while learning about ourselves and each other with an Autism Acceptance and Appreciation Spirit Week. Also on the horizon for the spring is our 2024 graduation seat raffle and our annual Grant of Gratitude. More info on both of these events will be coming soon in district newsletters and through our mailing list. In the words of Temple Grandin, the world needs all kinds of minds. For more information about inclusion, inclusion Matters and our upcoming events, you can find us on Facebook at Inclusion Matters MA or by visiting our website at www.inclusionmattersma.com. Thank you, Mr. Schmier. Policies. This is Dragon Eddie. All this right. Is Nelson. Move to open the following policies for review at next month's meeting. GCIA, Philosophy of Staff Development, GCJ, Professional Teacher Status, GCK, Professional Staff Assignments and Transfers, GCO, Evaluation of Professional Staff, GCQF, Suspension and Dismissal of Professional Staff Members, GCRD, Tutoring for Pay, FGDA, Support Staff Positions, um, GDB, Support Staff Contracts and Compensation Plans, GDD, Support Staff Vacations and Holidays, GDO, Evaluation of Support Staff, KF Form 1, Application for Use of School Property, KF Form 2, Application for Use of Athletic Spaces, and JEB Entrance Age. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Sure. So the, um, most of these policies were just trying to close out the G sections and, and getting through those just to, to clear those <coughs> out. 
Um, the last three um, we added um, based on feedback that, that came. Um, There's some questions about policy J, JEB. Um, so we're going to reopen that so we can take a look for next month. And then um, looking at the two forms because we had just um, redone the online submission. So, And if I could just add, I was the one that asked to have JEB put back on because um, I did get a parent reach out to me about the uh, kindergarten entrance age date, yep. um, the cutoff date, and it prompted me to look back at the policy and realize that when we voted to change that one in December, um, the language pertaining to the entrance age was removed. Um, and then talking to um, Mrs. Ellis and Mrs. Goulet, um, I just wanted to throw it out there to consider perhaps putting those back in. I know it's on the um, kindergarten um, district page but to have those the the entrance ages for first grade and um, kindergarten in the policy I think was was helpful so that's why that was out there and I won't be here next next yeah. month oh, to thank you. so I just wanted to let you know why that one was reopened so oh. did that change make a difference in the policy or is it just making it clear and upfront yeah it was just I think we the thought was that it was just helpful to have them the, the, it's another the place listed to find, to the find it if people go to the policy okay. first before the website. I was just wondering if there was a student that would have started a year later or earlier, depending on. Yeah, change. no, okay. no, um, just have it be there. Okay. Um, all in favor to open those? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember if we voted on it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, move to adopt the following policies. GCA professional staff positions, GCBA professional staff salary schedules, GCBB employment of principals, GCBC professional staff supplementary pay plans, GCE professional staff recruiting slash posting of vacancies, GCF professional staff hiring, and GCG substitute professional staff employment. Um, is there a second? Yeah. Discussion? Sure. So, um, about 40% of the policies this month were um, new to our district, but not MASC. We, um, this is the first chunk of, of the G policies um, that were all mainly related to the employment of um, individuals within the district. So um, there were three policies that were new to um, our index, GCBB, Employment of Principals. The policy was very straightforward. Um, and in um, discussion with Mr. Bodwell, uh, actually, let me go back. Robert and I had a, um, a meeting with Mr. Bodwell last week where we went through all these policies just because the nature of some of them were new um, and the ones that did have changes, we wanted to make sure that, that we discussed them and that, and that everything was um, okay. Um, so GCBB, Employment of Principals, as I said, it was very straightforward. And um, basically um, what the policy is outlining that you see is um, basically a business practice today in the contracting of, of the principals. Um, what we would recommend moving forward though is that um, uh, in for the um, contracts that we have the crafted job descriptions um, with additional scope and responsibilities to be added and that those could be um, down the line negotiated um, if there's anything that was a stipend. So we, um, I'll get to that, the stipend um, part of this later, but um, that was something that we would recommend. Um, for practice moving forward. GCBC, professional staff supplementary play plans, another new one. Um, again, very straightforward. This is where we discuss the stipends and how if tasks are not included in the job descriptions, um, that those those tasks be maybe um, you know further in, incorporated into the contracts. Um, GCE, professional staff recruiting and posting of vacancy. This policy entails the posting of vacancies, which is a basically a standard operating procedure where we don't have any problems with that. Um, other policies that we reviewed, we looked at, um, we reviewed and made some small revisions to GCA, professional staff positions. There was um, reviewing with this with Mr. Bodwell. We had some questions regarding, again, the job descriptions um, and if they existed and if they're accessible to the staff. Um, he was stated that the job descriptions do ex exist and um, they can be accessed via digital means, um, GCBA, professional staff salary schedules. This is an established policy that we had, but um, in reviewing the policy and the history, it appeared that there was an edit 
um, that was specific to West Bridgewater regarding the handling of merit increases. The MASE policy states that increases will be brought to the school committee for decisioning. As this is a significant change, well, we felt it was a significant change. <laughs> um, we did talk with Mr. Bodwell, and um, you did canvas, Mr. Bodwell canvassed his peers out in the community um, with other superintendents and, um, you know, to see how they were handling it. And um, it sounded like, from what you said, that most districts were handling it the way that the, pol the MASC policy was written. Um, Correct. So we were going to recommend moving forward with that. Um, GCF, professional staff hiring, this policy was revised, however, the content was generally the same. And then GCG, substitute professional staff employment, again, small revisions, and the content was pretty much the same. So that Any was questions or discussion? Nutshell. These were kind of, they were only seven, but they were kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. They were heavy, and that's mm -hmm. why we wanted yeah. to sit down with Mr. Bodwell and go through them just because we didn't want to. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I'm not sure I caught all the details of the policy change that would bring some some issues to the school committee for a vote. Was that a track change on pay increases? Is that, so I that, that which GCBA, GC is that the one? I think you're talking. Yeah, I think it's yep. GCBA. So I'm Don't not sure that I understood the the non. The yeah. Individual so this, contract. Yeah. So yep. this one was the one where the um, the change, the major change, is the smallest of words. So the change it, it originally said the superintendent with the advice of the school committee, but the that was our current policy that we had. Okay. MESC had the their language said the school committee with the advice of the superintendent. So it was. My tiny changes okay. in just like three words, and but so huge intent changes. Voting on what the structure of track changes would be on. So it's or? it's actually um, it's specific to principals and administrators. Okay. Um, the teachers that section did not change at all, and basically in practice, all it would change is that um, you know Mr. Bodwell handles his staff um, and the contracts and whatnot. We would just look at the budgetary impact before. He presents them, and we look at that. Okay. The monetary value. And that's where I did some checking yep. amongst colleagues yes. and found out that that's a very similar practice yes. in other districts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the way we are currently doing it is similar to other districts, or vice versa, the other way around. Okay. Vice so right. other districts follow the MASC yes. policy. Yes. Yes. Okay. And it still states it's the responsibility of the superintendent to present evidence to the school committee to support. Yes. Recommendations yep. for salary yes. increases. Yes. And that was it. It's <laughs> <That was> a <laughs> lot. Anything else? Any other questions? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Warrants. Okay. Um, the following warrants were issued and paid for the fiscal year 2024. Bill warrants March 7th, 2024 for $61,888.55. March 14, 2024, for $252,529.63. March 21, 2024, for $141,047.53. And March 28, 2024, for $56,180.09. The following payroll, payroll warrants, March 1, 2024, for $624,018.96. March 15, 2024, for $559,000. $307.19, and March 29th, 2024, for $604,642.40. As always, all warrants are public record, and once signed, are available in the Selectman's Office for a review. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Public comment. Members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members shall limit comments to three minutes, and are reminded that public comment is not a discussion, debate, or dialogue between individuals and the school committee. Personnel issues or issues that would violate student or employee confidentiality cannot be addressed during the public comment. Seeing none, we'll move on, on to calendar events. District-wide, there'll be a half day on April 10th. Um, April 15th, there's no school for Patriots Day. And then April 16th through the 19th is um, spring break. And on May 8th, there'll be a half day as well. 
district meetings on April 10th. The WB Athletic Boosters meeting will be held at 7 p.m. here in the Learning Commons. At the Spring Street School on April 11th, the Cereal Box Domino Challenge will take place, which is sponsored by the PTO. On April 24th, three kindergarten classes will take a field trip to Wardsbury Farm, and on April 26th, the other two classes will go. On May 9th and 10th, Life Touch will be on site for spring, pic spring pictures. At the Roselle McDonald School on April 9th and 11th, um, grade three will take the ELA MCAS. On April 22nd, there'll be a School Improvement Council meeting at 315. April 22nd to the 26th, grade three will have their wax museum from 945 to 1045. On May 3rd, there'll be a neon dance party from six o'clock to 8.30 p.m. sponsored by the PTO. On May 6th, Life Touch will be on site for individual and group picture day. And on May 8th, grade one will have their career day from 9.45 to 11 a.m. At Howard on April 9th through April 12th um, is the sixth grade nature's classroom trip. On April 9th and April 11th, fourth graders will take the ELA MCAS. April 24th is the spring picture day at Howard. April 30th and May 2nd, grade five will take the ELA MCAS. And on May 7th, grade six will take the math MCAS. Here at the Middle Senior High School on April 8th through April 12th, prom tickets will be on sale during power block and lunch. On April 11th, um, the Wildcat Pride Award Breakfast will take place. April 16th through April 19th, April Vacation Summer Enrichment Camp will take place. Um, on Wednesdays, yoga classes are held with Nurse Julie. On April 16th, APM mock, mock exam will take place. Um, April 30th, Honors Breakfast will be held. On May 3rd, um, the Junior Prom Grand March will begin at 6 p.m. in the gym. And on May 9th, the Academic te Technology and Finance Showcase will uh, take place from 5.30 to 7. Hopefully I get everything. Um, the next regular school committee meeting um, will be held on Monday, May 13th at 6 o'clock here in the Learning Commons. Um, next, I'd like to make a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of contract negotiations with non-union personnel and not to reconvene an open session. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. Um, it should be noted that having this discussion in open session may be detrimental to the public body's bargaining position and approval needs to be a roll call vote. So Mrs. Dragonetti? Yes. Mrs. Milton? Yes. Mrs. Mayaskowski? And Mr. Shamir. Yes. And Hume is a yes. So, so moved. I think that's it. Thank you very All much. Right. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. Thanks.